Maize for Kakaki Socials. What's trending? What are Nigerians talking about on the social media? Ohimai. Uh, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> good morning to you. Good morning, Nigeria, and welcome to Kakaki Social. I am Ohima Maize, your anchor on this segment. On this segment, we spotlight the issues shaping conversations in the Nigerian social media. Uh, yesterday, the British High Commission confirmed the identity of the lady who was killed during an attack on Kadru Castle in Kaduna State uh, on Friday night. Uh, the, she was actually killed along with uh, her Nigerian boyfriend, Matthew Oguche, who is also uh, working with an NGO known as the Safety Organization, uh, Faye Mooney, who has been identified by the British High Commission. She was just 29 years old. Uh, uh, she was visiting that resort with her boyfriend, uh, Matthew Oguche, and they were shot dead by uh, people who have been said to be unknown gunmen. Uh, that uh, incident yesterday when the British High Commission confirmed the identity generated a firestorm in the social media. We saw a lot of commentary. But first, let's take a look at this report by The Guardian. British High Commission identifies the woman killed during last Friday's attack on Kadru Castle as Faye Mooney. Uh, let's go on very quickly to the next uh, uh, slide and take a look at the details of that report. The 29-year-old British aid worker was killed by kidnappers along with a Nigerian during Friday evening's attack in which three other people were abducted. Cardinal Police and the British High Commission said. Mercy Corps, the non-governmental aid agency Mooney worked for, paid tribute to her. Uh, the paid tribute to her on Twitter. Twitter Mercy Corps said, It is with great sorrow that we share heartbreaking news. This weekend, Faye Mooney, a communications specialist in Nigeria, was killed in an attack in Kaduna State, Nigeria. Our entire organization is grieving with our family during this difficult time. Mercy Corps had tweeted yesterday, UK in Nigeria, the official hand of the British High Commission in Nigeria, tweeted and said, we are aware of the tragic incident involving the death of a British national in Kaduna State on Friday. The next of kin has been notified. The British High Commission offers our most profound sympathies and condolences to the families and friends at this difficult time. Our UK Nigeria in a tweet yesterday, the Senate President Bukola Saraki tweeted and said, My heartfelt prayers go out to all the families affected by Friday's attack on the Kadru Castle Resort in Kaduna. My deep condolences to the government of the United Kingdom and Mercy Corps over the death of the British aid worker, Faye Mooney who was killed in the attack. And then he continued in another tweet and said, it is my fervent hope that our security officials do everything in their power to rescue those that were abducted in Friday's attack so that they can be reunited with their loved ones as soon as possible. Bukola Saraki, the Senate president, tweeted yesterday. Senator Sheusani also tweeted, he said, Ms. Faye Mooney fell to the kidnapper's bullet, but factually failed by our failings. She was not a victim, but a martyr and a hero who believed in us and walked into our minds with flowers and with love. She was a reflection of our tragedy, our perils and the bitter truth about our present. Senator Shehusani, waxing poetic of there. Benmore Bruce in a tweet said, I condole with my friend Katriona Lang, High Commissioner of the UK in Nigeria, that's the British High Commission, over the death of Faye Mooney and her Nigerian compatriot, Matthew Oguche. Britain is a friend of Nigeria and we must treat our friends well. I call on the FG and state government to bring Aquilas to book. Senator Ben Ray Bruce yesterday tweeted, uh, let's take, take a look at this tweet from uh, Atiku Abubakar. I condemn the killings of British aid worker Faye Mooney and her Nigerian partner Matthew Oguche two days ago in Cardinal State. Several other Nigerians were kidnapped during the episode. He continued in another tweet and said that uh, I want the government and the people of the United Kingdom to know that these atrocious actions do not reflect Nigeria's national character. Uh, the PDP presidential candidate in the just concluded presidential election and former vice president tweeting there, Okbayemi Babalola tweeting at Kakoti once said, Faye Mooney, the Britain tourist kidnapped and killed in Kaduna, is another heavy blow to the already dented image of the country. This is not just a national shame and embarrassment, it is the reality of our weak internal security. The security chiefs have all failed, woefully. Kakoti passing a vote of no confidence there on our security chiefs. Tonya Ville three tweet and said, Nigerian leaders are the biggest natural disaster in the world. Faye Mooney was killed in Kaduna along with Matthew Oguche, a Nigerian. Our politicians have been tweeting since yesterday about Mooney while going almost silent on Oguche. You all disgust me. Toyeville 3 tweeting there. Ari Aristoto in a tweet said, A British national, Miss Faye Mooney, with Mercy Corps, was killed alongside Matthew Oguche, a staff of safety organization, in Kajuru on Friday by terrorists who also abducted three others. Erufai has tweeted nothing about it. Mooney will be returned to her country 
in body bags. Are you Aristotle tweeting there yesterday? And of course, uh, there's this issue that is trending, the clash between the Senate president and national leader of the APC, Asewaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu. He had accused the Senate president, Bukala Saraki, and the Speaker of the House of Representatives, uh, Yakubu Dogara, of padding the budget for the last four years. And yesterday, the Senate president issued a robust response uh, in a quite lengthy statement. He said someone as enlightened as Asiwaju Bola Metinubu, who has been a senator and a state governor, should actually know how the processes of governance works and should understand that the process of uh, the budget goes beyond just the two leaders of the House, but also the leaders of the MDAs themselves and uh, the House committee chairmen, who are not just members of one political party, but are drawn from both sides of the divide. Uh, yesterday, we saw this report from Punch, Saraki Dogara padded budgets for four years. Tinubu, let's take a look at the details of what Tinubu actually said that got uh, Saraki to respond. The national leader of the APC, Asiwaju Bola Tinubu on Sunday, accused the president President of the Senate, Bokola Saraki, and the Speaker of the House of Reps, Yakubu Dogara, of allegedly hijacking and padding national budgets for the four years that the party had been in power. He claimed that the two presiding officers of the National Assembly always padded the budgets with pet projects that profited them while they cut funds appropriated to projects that would have benefited Nigerians. Tinubu made the allegation in a statement made available to journalists by his media aide, Tunde Rahman. Uh, let's take a look at what Saraki now said. Dwell on facts. The Senate President is saying, please dwell on facts. Let's take a look at uh, a portion of uh, what the Senate President said in a statement which was issued on his behalf by his media aide Yusuf Olani Onu yesterday. Tinubu should leave Dr. Saraki out of his schemes and manipulations towards 2023. It is obvious his arbitrary and tactless interference in the process for the emergence of the leadership of the Ninth Assembly is already falling through. The frustration from this experience might have been responsible for this needless and baseless outburst. Our only advice for him is that if he is interested in the stability of the National Assembly, he should allow the members to elect their leadership in consultations with the party leadership. He should stop treating the legislators like hapless pupils receiving orders from a cane-wielding headmaster. A situation where he, Tinubu, is dictating to elected legislators and ordering them to either comply with his directives or get out of the party will not go well for the legislature in the next dispensation. Uh, shots fired there by Senate President Bukola Saraki. Kuli Monster tweeting said, even if APC occupies the whole seats in the country as governors, senators, president, they will still complain that the citizens didn't support them. That is why they didn't do well. It's already their trademark. Saraki can single-handedly be their problem of not performing. Kuli Monster tweeting yesterday, Onile 05 to Onile Maharun Karim tweeting said, Instead of Tinubu to face the fact that the 8th National Assembly is the only reason Nigeria is still standing with any degree of democratic functionality, he is there grandstanding unnecessarily. Onile 050 tweeting, but ABD OJS tweeting, firing shots as Saraki said, There is absolutely nothing you have achieved than introducing corruption at all levels of the National Assembly. Padding the budget, undermining the efforts of the executive, lavishing our money as you like, buying two exotic cars at 330 million each, giving your members 36 million naira each for SUV. ABD OJS tweeting there, but Ario Aristotle in a tweet has said, anytime Tinubu is losing national reckoning, he returns to attacking Saraki to distract us. Did Saraki stop worry from attending Tinubu's birthday after relocating his ditched colloquium to Abuja? He should apply wisdom. Baja will not get it. You've been used and dumped, sir. Ariyo Aristotle tweeting yesterday. And then we move on from this issue to the issue of uh, Ukraine. Okay, guys, so Ukraine has just elected a new president. And guess what? He's a comedian. Ukraine has just elected a comedian as their new president. No jokes. Serious matter. Okay, let's take a look at this development and how Nigerians have reacted. Piers Morgan in a tweet yesterday broke the news and said, Breaking. A comedian with zero political experience who starred in a political satirical drama called Servant of the People, in which his character accidentally became president of Ukraine, has just become president of Ukraine. This is not a joke. Volodymyr Zelensky is the new president-elect of uh, Ukraine. Uh, Deutsche Welle News yesterday in a short uh, story, video story, reported this and said in a TV show, Volodymyr Zelensky plays a teacher who unexpectedly wins the presidency of Ukraine. Now the comedian made this TV script a reality. So he has a show where he plays the role of a president, a fictional role of a president. And then he decided to contest. And the interesting thing about this guy is that his party was founded just last year, in March 2018. 
And he also named his party after his TV show, Servant of the People. And the people of Ukraine have put their faith in his hands. Let's take a look at this video very quickly. I'm feeling good, thank you. Thank you everybody. Nikola ne zdavajsa, čuju ja i zaraz, koli baču ti rezultate exit polev. A vani očividni. I dajut pitstave, zaraz, podzvonite mojemu oponentovi i privitate jo. Okay, let's take a look at how Nigerians are reacting to that. Abuba Kassidi, whose man tweeting at Mr. Abu Siddiq said, In Ukraine, a comedian played the role of the president in a political satirical drama. Today, he has been elected the president of Ukraine. Sometimes, play, no be play. Mr. Abu Siddiq tweeted, Renault Mokri said the comedian was elected president of Ukraine by a landslide. The same day his victory was announced, a leader of a Nigerian church con congregation announced that he would deal with his pastors if they host comedians in church. Are you still surprised Nigeria is an international joke? Right now, Mokri tweeting yesterday. And uh, from Kayode Ogundami C tweeting said, Delude yourself. Keep comparing Nigeria to Ukraine. All politics is local. Study your local environment and put in the hard work. Electorate won't just entrust you for having the right soundbite or the one who can insult the most. Dig deep. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Ogunda missed a tweet yesterday. Umaya Haya S in a tweet said, A 41-year-old Ukrainian comic actor contested for the Ukraine president's seat and won. He created his own political party and gave the party the same name as his show. Ran his election campaign based on comedy tours and social media. Also shunning journalists and avoiding debates. The world and its politics is changing. Okay, we go now to Instagram where this video is trending on Instablog Niger. Uh, I think I was probably not born when Lawrence Anini, the notorious bandit who terrorized Benin City in Edo State alongside his sidekick, Monde Osumbo, uh, was, you know, he, he, was a, he was some sort of a legend. <laughs> not in a positive sense, but in that negative sense. And we've seen this video of his son coming out to say, I'm not so proud of what my dad did. I'm actually not proud of what my dad did, but... Guys, cut me some slack. Everywhere I go, people identify me as the son of the late Lawrence Anini and I see how they look at me and, well, let's take a look at the details. I'm proud of my dad, but I'm not like him. Son of deadly armed robber, Anini addresses those profiling him. Let's take a look at this video and the comments that followed. If I pass now for road life, people there like the coins me say, that guy. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to any picture. I'm not going to hide. I'm not going to hide myself. Even Nigeria government. As I did, yes, even Nigeria government know me. You know what I'm I don't use that name to even follow Nigeria government. Go court for like four years. So, when I hear they say, maybe if you see me now, say maybe they had to point me to somebody. I'm, the head, I'm proud of my father, my guy. You know what I'm saying? Even if maybe you want yourself, you want to check on the reason I say, man, the way you even tell on your own thing, say, say, you not go down way with you. And uh, your opinion be down, I respect her. But for me, now my father, my guy, you understand? Uh, I know the feed, I know the, I know the head on. We'll be two. You understand? I get elder brother. Okay, the Aninis are speaking. <laughs> Adalgo Solange posted said, I can't imagine what he must have been through. Being the son of the popular Anini, he looks pained. And there were some more comments yesterday. Headmaster posted said, Someone said his dad was so good that if you gossip about him, he would appear right beside you and rob you. Your dad was a legend. 
headmaster of Posting, Plains Cavalli said, Jesus was crucified beside a thief and a murderer, exactly like your dad. But Jesus said, by this time tomorrow, you will be with me in paradise. That is what grace can do. So who am I to judge? Happy Easter, Plains Cavalli posted. And from Umbaku to the king said, I heard your dad drove to Lagos from Benin on reverse while on a hot pursuit. Legend, again, Umbaku to the king posting there. Super Walk 84 said, his father dealt with police officers those days, from what I heard, and he shed money to people on the streets after robbing. <laughs> a lot of interesting comments that we've seen on this issue of uh, the late Lawrence Anini. The... Okay, let's move on from Anini's matter now. Come to Game of Thrones. Now, if you haven't watched Game of Thrones, we need to organize a special prayer session for you. This is by far the biggest show on TV after Kakaki Social, okay? <laughs> Okay, so the second episode of season 8, the final season of Game of Thrones was out on Monday and it ended with uh, Jon Snow revealing his real identity to Daenerys Targaryen. Uh, we don't know how Daenerys is going to really handle that, but we've seen a promo of season, th of season 8, episode 3, which as we have learned is going to be really big. It's going to be like over 80 minutes long and that is where the real battle is going to happen. The biggest battle ever that you have seen on television is going to be happening in episode 3 of Game of Thrones. Let's take a look at uh, this trailer which was shared. 4GO TV shared it and said, Next Monday, we are coming to see what is believed to be the greatest battle in the history of television. The preparation of this episode took more than 55 working days and the duration will be 82 minutes. Can you beat that? Let's take a look at this trailer very quickly. The most heroic thing we can do now is look the truth in the face. The Night King is coming. The dead are already here. Start your crime! <laughs> I can't wait. You can see I'm rocking my Game of Thrones inspired outfit already. <laughs> okay, let's go and take a look at uh, okay, the issue of uh, Da Green, the Nigerian rapper who uh, died nine years ago yesterday. It was exactly nine years ago yesterday that we lost Da Green. His death uh, took the industry by surprise, shook the Nigerian music industry to its very foundation. Uh, yesterday marked nine years of his death. And Tunde had not posted this throwback video on Instagram. Nine years and it seems like yesterday. Rest in peace, that grain. Uh, let's take a look at this throwback video very quickly. Okay, that green may be dead and gone, but uh, he will always remain a champion and we pray that may his soul continue to rest in peace. And as we draw the curtain this morning, this video from MC Lively on his Instagram page is quite interesting. Are the youths truly the leaders of tomorrow? He's asking. And, okay, <laughs> it's even Zanku, they are dancing everywhere now. From MC Lively, let's take a look at this video. Good morning, sir. I leave the uh, back of the guy. Uh, Good morning, right sir. Now. Sorry. Good morning, sir. Uh, sir, can the youth be the leader of tomorrow, sir? Youth cannot lead out tomorrow. Uh -huh. Which youth? Which tomorrow? Where? 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 He's in Nigeria. Since they, they bombed me, that's why it has been a scam. Since they bombed me. Because the president now was president in 1985. You understand? 1985 was president. 30 years down the lane, he is still president. And now he has declared that he wants to go and do the president to second time. How will you not allow the youth people to, to be president? Because now, many people are fired. They are killing people in Benue. They are doing everything. They are declaring president. Even the youth, every time they are complaining, leader, leader, leader. 
Some youth they are all their gain in this life is how they will go and be mixed, coding with diesel, and go and be doing science that they did not do in secondary school, and they will miss it so that they will be high. So that they will be high. They will be singing uh Sony, Osho Sony Sakusaku all about some of them call it the same almost secretary. Almost secretary. How can almost secretary be leader of tomorrow? How can you see? Some leaders of you, the only thing they can be leader of is WhatsApp group. That's the only thing. <laughs> that was savage from MC Lively. <laughs> Okay, it was actually a throwback video. And this is where we draw the curtain this morning. Please follow the conversation on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Kakaki Social. I am Ohimaya Maize. Kakaki Social returns tomorrow at 8 a.m. I'll be handing over back now to Salamatu and Shola. Hmm. Oh, my, yeah, very instructive. M hmm. MC, what's his lively. name? MC Lively. MC lively. Throwing a charge mm -hmm. in the direction of the youths, hmm. really. Yes. Very instructive. Very Funny instructive. humor, but hmm. message there. Exactly. Have a Thank good you. morning. Thank Take you very much. Yourself. All right.